Welcome to worship at Nokomis Heights Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. My name is Pastor Chris Capel, and I'm joined by my colleague, Pastor Steve Delzer. And we um, are excited this week. It's our last week in our Summer of Love worship series. Next week, we continue with um, a new worship series called Just Love. So we, you know, we're continuing to love yeah, one another. Yeah, the love theme. Yeah, the love theme. Yeah, the love theme. Uh, we've had kind of a big week here at Nokomis Heights with uh, uh, theater camp happening inside even as we stand here and speak. And that's been fun to see the kiddos and hear their music and laughter and theater yeah. production going on. Um, and this Sunday, when you're probably watching this, we have our uh, pop-up vacation Bible school from 4 to 6 p.m. So if you want to drop by and say hi, you're welcome to do that. Very good. Yeah. And our worship this morning, uh, we begin with confession and forgiveness. If we speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but don't love, we are nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If we speak God's word with power, revealing all mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if we have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but we don't love, we are nothing. If we give everything we own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but don't love, we've gotten nowhere. So no matter what we say, what we believe, and what we do, we are bankrupt without love. Forgive us, O God, when we fail to love. Fill us up with your love, that we show up in the world as people who love one another as you have loved us. God is the purest of love. Know that you are forgiven and free to love one another as God loves you. Amen. has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for
It's the sun when mine is morning Born of the one light Eden softly Praise with elation Praise every morning God's recreation Of a new day The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout be with you and also with you let us pray God of love in, in the, the beginning, beginning in the end and in, in all, all the empty spaces these three things remain faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love thank you for loving us with the greatest love of all in Jesus name we pray amen Today's reading is from the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part, but when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading is from the 12th chapter of Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this week is the end of our uh, Summer of Love Worship series as we've been reading through the book of 1 Corinthians and we are capping it off with 1 Corinthians 13, the most famous part of 1 Corinthians and the most famous part of the Bible probably. 
But today I'm not going to start with 1 Corinthians, but I'm going to start with the gospel lesson that we have been reading every week during this worship series, where Jesus says what the greatest commandment is. He said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. Notice how that ends. Loving your neighbor as yourself, which implies that it is impossible to love your neighbor unless you love yourself. This week, the world watched as the most decorated and talented female gymnast of all time made a brave and bold and to some a controversial decision to love herself. She put aside the expectations of the world and she lived into her truth. Simone Biles on July 7th said on her Instagram caption, whatever is good for your soul, do that. And she did that this week. It was an act of radical love to choose to care for her mental health because she knows that life is about more than just a moment. Life isn't a performance. Life is a moment by moment breathing in and out of love for God, for ourselves, and for one another. And because she chose to love herself, I'll bet you any amount of money that she has empowered millions of people the world over to choose to love themselves as well. So that happened this week. We watched someone love themselves well. Also this week, my dear friend told me a story. My friend is a teacher who works with children who are at risk. And one day, a little girl came up to my friend and said to my friend, does your husband ever yell at you? Does he get mad? And my friend said, well, he gets mad, but he doesn't really yell. And my, friend, my friend's little, the little girl said, does, does he ever hit you when he gets mad? And my friend said, oh no, he never hits me when he gets mad. And my friend said, does he ever cheat on you? And my friend said, oh no, he never cheats on me. And the little girl said, well, what would you do if he did any of those things? And my friend said, well, I would pack all of his stuff in a bag and I would put it in the front yard of the house and I would lock the doors and I would change the locks and he would never be welcome back in my house. And the little girl looked at her so puzzled and she said, well, what would Jesus think if you did that? And my friend said to the little girl, Jesus would say, good job loving yourself. He made bad choices and you made a good choice to love and care for yourself. Also this week, I listened to a podcast. This podcast is Glennon Doyle, who is a wonderful blogger and speaker and has become a major social media influencer. Glennon Doyle is married to Abby Wambach, who is a famous uh, world champion soccer player. And uh, they were talking on their podcast about uh, Abby's experience growing up in the church. She loved the church. She loved what the church was about. She loved singing the song. She loved thinking about God who loved her. And then one day she started to uh, tell her friends at church that she was gay. And her friends at church uh, immediately dismissed her. And it became very clear to her within a very short amount of time that she was no longer welcome in the church. And so she made the hard decision to walk out of that church. And in walking out of that church, she says that she also walked away from God and became an atheist for many, many years. It wasn't until she met and married Glennon Doyle uh, that she started to think about God again. And Glennon said something so powerful to Abby in this podcast. She said, Abby, when you walked out of that church, you did not walk away from God. When you walked out of that church, you took God with you. You chose to love yourself and the image of God that was in you. Now, I begin with these three examples. These examples of people choosing to love themselves because I cannot emphasize enough times or clearly enough that love does not ask us to become a doormat. Not in our most intimate relationships, not in our professions, not in our communities, not in our churches. In order to love in the way that God calls us to love, we must also love ourselves, care for ourselves, 
honor the image of God that is created in each of us. So when we talk about love, as Paul describes it in 1 Corinthians 13, it's so important that we keep in mind the context of Paul's words. Love is all of the things that Paul describes. Paul tells us what love is, and Paul tells us what love is not. And Paul is talking not to an individual who is being abused by a person or a church or a system or a sport or a profession. He's not saying to someone in in an abusive relationship, be patient, be kind, persist, keep going. That's not what he's saying. Although these verses have been abused and misinterpreted in that way, Paul is talking specifically to a community, to a church, that is in deep conflict with one another. What Paul is really doing here is casting a vision for what Christian community at its best looks like. In the book, Love is the Way, that many of us have been reading through this summer, Bishop Michael Curry talks about the fact that all movements of love start with a dream. This is sign language for dream. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream that all people would be treated equally. Desmond Tutu had a dream for an end to apartheid. The keepers of George Floyd Square have a dream that is both an extension of Martin Luther King's dream and a rebirth of a movement of persistent love in the world, love that changes things, love that moves mountains. And this poem in 1 Corinthians 13 is God's dream written by Paul for how the community of church centered around the love of God through Jesus Christ lives out God's mission of love in the world. We have heard this chapter of the Bible so many times that perhaps we think the words are beautiful and poetic, but we've become numb to their meaning. In his book, Tattoos on the Heart, a memoir about Father Greg Boyle's decades-long ministry with gangs in Los Angeles County, he recounts this. He says, I can remember listening to a kid at a probation camp read at Mass from 1 Corinthians 13. If you've been to as many weddings as I have, you go numb as you hear, love is patient, love is kind, love is blah, 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 and your mind floats away. You start wondering if the Dodgers won last night and remind yourself to move your clothes from the washer to the dryer. But this kid started to read it like it really mattered, as the homies would say, woke my butt up proper. (laughs) He looked out at everyone and proclaimed with astounding surety, love never fails. And he sat down and I believed him. God's dream, not just for the Corinthian church, but for the church on earth, is that we would be a community centered and grounded in love. But not just any love. It's what the Bible calls agape love. It's a Greek word used only a few times in the Bible and in only a handful of other ancient texts. Agape love is very distinctly God love. It's distinguished from philos love, which is a love between two people, a friendship, or eros love, which is that feeling, that romantic love that you feel when you first fall in love, or even when you see something incredible in nature, like the Niagara Falls. Agape love, writes Bishop Michael Curry, is a firm commitment to act for the well-being of someone other than yourself. A firm commitment to act for the well-being of someone other than yourself. It can be personal or political, individual or communal, intimate or public. Love will not be segregated to the private, personal precincts of life. Agape love is ubiquitous. It's ever-present. It's never-failing. And it's never-ending. Those words sound beautiful and poetic, but do we believe them? Do we really believe that love does not fail? I am a glass half full kind of a person. In fact, some people say I'm a glass three quarters full kind of a person. And I have to admit that this year has put my strong belief that love always wins to a really big test pandemic and death and racial injustice, gun violence that seems to never end, 
the selfishness of people who refuse to put the health of others above their own comfort, our children who are suffering from what professionals are calling the pandemic after the pandemic, a pandemic of depression and hopelessness in our teenagers. How can we continue to believe that love does not fail when it seems that the world apart is falling around, or the world around us is falling apart? And this is where our faith comes in. As people of faith, who believe in and confess something so unbelievable as Jesus, who died and rose from the dead to release endless love into the world, we are called to dig down deep and to dream a vision of a world where love persists beyond everything else. Along with MLK Jr., along with Desmond Tutu, Harriet Tubman, and so many others who have persisted for the sake of love, we have to continue to share love in this world that is persistent and steady, that always shows up, that exists for the sake of the other. What can be frustrating about love that is rooted in a dream for a better world is that we may never see the realization of that world of which we dream. I have a friend who was a pastor in Illinois, and she told me a story about a woman in her congregation who was suffering with breast cancer. Uh, she had been suffering with breast cancer for many years. It had recurred and recurred and recurred, and she's, she had gone through so many rounds of chemo, and her body had just you know, really taken a toll. And the last time she was diagnosed, uh, she knew there was really nothing that they could do for her that was going to be life-saving. She knew this was the end for her. Uh, but she continued to ask her doctor, is there another clinical trial? Is there something more that uh, we could do just to see what works or what doesn't work? And her doctor said to her, we know nothing is gonna work. I want you to enjoy the time you have left here rather than continuing to put your body through this hell on earth. Um, it's time for you to be at peace. And he said to her, why do you continue wanting all these treatments when you know that they won't work? She said, because I have daughters and I have granddaughters and my granddaughters will probably have daughters and I am dreaming of a better world for them one day when they won't have to suffer with this kind of cancer. Her vision was for a world that she would never see. Her love came from a deep place that gave her persistence and patience so that one day we might have a world that is free from breast cancer. Incredible story of persistence and patience and suffering in love. We gather every week in worship to remind ourselves that God loves us and we love one another and we're called to love the world no matter how hard it might be to do so. No matter how far-fetched this dream of a world that is filled with love might seem, we are called to persist and to continue to dream of a world where God's love wins. We gather to confess that we are absolutely broken apart and incapable of loving at all times, but that we believe in a God who restores us every single day with more and more love, even as we fall short. We gather here to dream into being a community of love that we share through acts of kindness toward our neighbor, through offering food or comfort, through fighting for justice and equality for all people and for continuing to pray and live and work into being a love that never ends. I'm gonna to end today with a quote from Bishop Michael Curry, who, as I reminded you earlier, wrote that amazing book, Love is the Way, which I highly recommend that you read. He writes this, I believe, and I suspect most of you do too, that we must choose community the human community, in community with all creation. 
This is the beloved community of God. This is what the late lay theologian Verna Dozier and Archbishop Desmond Tutu have often called the dream of God. And love, unselfish, sacrificial, unconditional, and liberating love is the way, frankly the only way, to realize God's dream of the beloved community on earth as it is in heaven. It's the only thing that can and that ever will make the world a better place. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. You call your church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together. Point us toward love and kindness above all else. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. Defend species at risk of extinction. Send rain where there is drought and be with those whose daily lives are affected by climate change. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry, reassure those who are despairing, and accompany those who are imprisoned. Rain down healing from heaven and shower the world with your love. We pray today for those in need of healing who are part of this community. For Casey Ostad, Linda Ostad, Jerry Casterton, Rich Groner, Jennifer Harris, and Dee Levine. 
And we pray for all those whom we know and love, naming them in the silence of our hearts at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome all people with open arms and open hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another if you're with others, and if not, um, throughout the week. Be aware of those instances in your daily life where you might share a sign of God's peace with someone whose path crosses yours. Like Dana. Like Dana. Peace be with you, Dana. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is the time in our worship service where we receive our offering. You will see all the ways come up on the screen that you can contribute to the life of the church, uh, financially anyway. Uh, but just uh, for a second, I want to tell you about something really cool that happened this year. Uh, we have three kiddos at camp this week as I speak. Mine is one of them. And we had a really generous uh, donor who uh, wanted to help send kids to camp. So because of their generosity, uh, some of the cost of Camp WAPO and uh, these kiddos being able to grow in faith and love for one another has been defrayed. So thank you so much for the many ways in which you give to Nokomis Heights uh, that impacts the lives of our kids and adults and people near and far. this portion of the uh, worship service, we are here in the church library. Uh, many of you may not have been in this room in a while, so it's a chance to, to see what's in here. And now, let us pray. God of abundance, everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took some bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. 
After supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from this cup, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Gathered into one by the power of the Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You gather all to your table even when we keep some out. You welcome all to your supper even when we limit the guest list. Your grace and mercy are enough for all. Now let us come at our Savior's invitation. If you are with others, as you share the bread, I would invite you to say the body of Christ given for you. And as you share the cup, to say the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are alone, then please hear those words from me. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.